how many years ago was it that I swore that I vowed that I made a mandate to myself that I was not going to work on my birthday anymore? And here we are, the sun's barely come up on September the 17th, and I'm sitting in front of this microphone talking to I love to people, the cult of Cornette. But did we have to do this particularly right now? You had you had a little rendezvous with a Russian girl named Hannah. And as a result, we're doing this on my birthday. Are we still how, doing, was, how was your little... Are we still rendezvous? doing that bad joke? Yeah, it was Rosh Hashanah, one of the uh, holiest days that he won, the high holy days. Of course, Yom Kippur is coming up, and it was good. I enjoy it every year. I enjoy the uh, traditions. And I did not force you to do anything today. Well, we can't leave the people dangling. This is Jim Cornette experience number 500. And there's always tomorrow. I got plumbers coming tomorrow. <laughs> plumbers, oh, plumbers. I see. I see. Fixing them leaks. The White House plumbers, baby. No, I got, I got, I got water softeners to be installed. I, you know, I'm changing everything. I've changed everything here at the castle over the past couple of years. Now I've replaced all the air conditioners, all the furnaces, the water heaters. I put the, uh, now we're getting the water softeners in. I've had the breaker boxes redone, so we got more more power, Captain. What do you mean water softeners? Like, I know there's water softener tablets. Like, I get those, and I use those. What do you mean, water what softeners? Do you, what do you do with a, with a tablet? You put them in the big tub. What big tub? There's a big tub for the water softener. That's what I'm having replaced. The tub itself? The big water softener. What do, you, what do you think? You're just putting salt in this fucking bucket that just came with the no. house and it's going to be there forever? No, the salt is the water softener. Those tablets are the water softener. The tub is just the container that facilitates the water softening action. I don't know what you're talking about, but I've got at each end of the house alongside of my water heaters. And the reason why they're at each end of the house is because, of course, of all the remodeling and additions and everything that we've done over a period of time. You, you've got the, you got the water softener and, and it's the tank and you put the, the salt pellets or, or bags of salt, you dump it in the tank and boom, and it softens your water. If you got the hard water, you take a shower, it'll knock you out. You'll see stars as soon as that shit hits your scalp. That's not the way. You got to soften that water up. <laughs> hey, and, well, I'll tell you what. I've never once been knocked out in my own home by taking a shower. I'll have you know, because I got these water softeners. So that proves my point. This was all new to me a few years ago. They were like, you know, you're going to have to get water softeners. I'm like, Excuse me? What are you talking about? Soft water. Well, the water's hard. What do you even... I had no idea what any of this meant. Oh, it's got all the chemicals and all the sediments and all the lead poisoning. And all the, the filth and decay of our urban civilization that's funneled into our groundwater and then recirculated to us. No wonder we're all dying at an early age, grasping for air, with lesions all over our bodies, laying in the fucking street with people kicking us and stepping all over us. Jesus. It's because of the water. People don't have enough water softeners. Happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what's happening so i got plumbers tomorrow so we, we we came down to this is what i'm saying on my birthday 62 years old i'll be at at 10 40 p.m eastern standard time tonight that is i will officially turn 62 my mother always said that that i i like to stay up late even at an early age what are you saying what do you think of people that like stay up and as soon as it's midnight, they're like, it's my birthday. Do you think it should be the minute you're born or should it be as soon as the day turns? Well, no, well, for what purposes? Now, see, if you're just trying to be chronologically accurate, it should be the moment that you first popped out and, and made your presence felt in the, in the, in the world. And, and it, your, your mother then had had suddenly expelled a giant parasite she'd been carrying around for nine months, <laughs> then that would be the exact minute. But if you're going for, oh, I'm going to have a birthday party, or it's okay for somebody to wish me a happy birthday, something that shouldn't be, you know, measured by the, you know, uh, International Fecal Standards Committee in Zurich, Switzerland, or whatever, then the the date will suffice, except if you're one of these people that gets fucked on the leap year. 
I'm not talking about actually fucked on leap year. That's most of the AEW fans. I'm talking about fucked out of your birthday because you were born on February 29th. So then in that case, you're going to have to decide on the 28th or March 1st or elsewise you get shorted a lot of cake and a lot of presents over the course of your lifetime. What was the question? This is a real happy and cheery edition of the drive through Well, Let's I'm see. just telling you, you're having me on the air here today. You're going to get what you're going to get. We're going to talk about where I've been at various points when I've had to work on my birthday. I'll have you know later right. on in this program. This is the happy talk portion oh, of the happy <laughs> birthday episode. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we get the cheerfulness out of the way early so we can get down to shucking this corn right down to the cob but I, I will have you know i had a nice time last night i'm still picking the food out of my teeth as a matter of fact last night on a saturday night which i don't get listen to elton john anymore they they ruined that but uh <laughs> no my, come on for my pre-birth no i'm i'm talking about on saturday night at eight o'clock, we watched oh. Spinguli. I'll have you know, I thought, put ahead in my narrative here. I thought you meant you were taking it out on Sir Elton that CM Punk was fired. You're never going <laughs> to oh, listen to his music again. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you, he could have fucking put in a complaint. He's like, "Hey, you licensed my song. You got to have my fucking guy." Anyway, for my pre-birthday dinner, I'll have you know that I, I, got in the kitchen. And prepared for Stacy and myself, not for Harley. She can't eat this kind of spicy food, but she's got her appetite back. She had uh, a, a broiled plain chicken breast and some carrots. But I prepared a New York strips and sea scallops, big as billiard balls. I got the good ones. Then I've got my special recipe where I mix up the Andes fish breading along with the seasoned panko breadcrumbs and drop them in a deep fryer for five minutes. And oh my God, they're pea picking good. I'll tell you what, your lips will smack your brains out. And the New York strip was about two inches thick and boom and, and, and baked potato and a baked sweet potato for Stace. And, and Harley had a little sweet potato too. She likes those. She's a very, a, a very vegetarian oriented puppy. And then we sat down. A very vegetarian-oriented She puppy. likes the vegetables. She likes the little baby peppers. She likes the carrots. She likes the the uh, uh, the sweet potatoes. But you can't be veg. You're either a vegetarian or you're not. not well, she likes she, vegetables. She's, she, she likes vegetables. She's very vegetable-oriented then. Or she, I don't know. You know, she could be a vegetarian or and she just eating the chicken to be polite. I don't know. She seems to like it. Who are you to deprive my dog of a decent meal? I'm not trying to deprive her of a decent meal. Well, getting back to my decent meal after we finished that. And by the way, and Stace got me the traditional birthday cake. There's a place over here, Brian, called Nothing Bunt Cakes. And you'll never guess what they sell. Hopefully good bunt cakes. Bunt, the best bunt cake that your butt has ever witnessed and ever tasted. I don't know, how did, did your butt taste cake very well to begin with? But, or, or sea cake, for that matter. Let but me ask him. Yeah. <laughs> nothing bunt cakes, and I got a big bunt cake with the big dollops of this, oh my God, this icing, it'll just, it'll make you dizzy as soon as you take a bite of it. There's so much sugar in it. And it's just, it's so creamy and mm -mm -mm -mm. But anyway, and sat down and watched Svengoolie, our old friend Svengoolie, because Mr. Sardonicus was on. And, uh, and then that was my pre-birthday evening, since I knew I was going to be subjected to speaking to you here earlier today. So I was trying to find my enjoyment where I could. Do you think happy birthday should be in the public domain? The song. Well, how old are those women now? You know they're from Louisville, Kentucky, don't you? No, I do not know the women behind it or where they're from. No, tell me about it. What are you talking about? The two, the two women, I can't say girls. <laughs> I can't say young women. I don't know how old they were when they wrote the song. But when they wrote the song, the two sisters, they're from Louisville. I, don't, I can't remember their fucking name. Murdy and Gertie Height. I don't know. I can't remember their names. But uh, but the happy, but how old would they be now? Would they be, what, 120, 130 years old? 
they probably earned enough residuals off of that. I will look who, that up. Who would own Happy Birthday? Uh, well, I don't know who owns it, but it would certainly have a publishing company. Uh, Happy Birthday to You, also known as Happy Birthday, is a song traditionally sung to celebrate a person's birthday. <laughs> well, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> and why are you investigating this anyway? The first thing you think about when you think about the song Happy Birthday is who owns the rights? Should they still be getting residuals? What's all right? But the songwriters, the songwriters were Patty Hill and Mildred J. Hill. Although there you go. It says in parentheses, disputed. What? <laughs> Who's disputing the Hill girls? <laughs> And it was 1893 that the song was published by Clayton F. Summy. Well, now, who's disputing this? Because I thought it was settled that they wrote this, this song, these, these poor young well, women. See. Patty Hill was a kindergarten, prin a kindergarten principal, excuse me, in Louisville, Kentucky. Ah, uh, see? Huh? Developing teaching methods at the Little Loom House. See, the little loons were, were learning from the Hill Sisters. We've always been on the forefront here in Louisville of educating the loons. Are you familiar with the Little Loom House? I've, my mother used to threaten to send me to the Little Loony House. Uh, <laughs> Her sister Mildred was a pianist and composer. Wait a minute, a penis? A pianist. Oh, pianist, on the piano. She tickled the ivory. She tickled the ivories and a composer... The sisters used Good Morning to All as a song that young children would find easy to sing. The combination of melody and lyrics and Happy Birthday to You first appeared in print in 1912. None of the early appearances of the Happy Birthday to You lyrics included credits or copyright notices. The Summy Company registered a copyright in 1935. What? Crediting authors Preston Ware Orum and Mrs. R. R. Forum, or Foreman, excuse wait, me. Wait a minute, Orum and Forum? What is this, a goddamn <laughs> fucking Marx Brothers? Orum <laughs> <laughs> and Forum, there is no sanity clause. In 1988, Warner Chapel Music purchased the company owning the copyright for $25 million. With the value of Happy Birthday estimated at five million, Warner claimed that the United States copyright would not expire until 2030, and that unauthorized public performances of the song were illegal what? unless royalties were paid. That's why you never hear it in movies. What movie have you ever heard the song sung in? Well, now you got me there. That's why it's never in movies. It's only in classrooms. <laughs> That's why it's Good never Lord. sung in movies. So there it is. Uh, some Louisville history on your birthday. Wait a minute. I have had happy birthday sung to me on television, on wrestling TV. By Sunny. Haven't I? By Sunny, right? No, I was going to say her, her is Marilyn Monroe, but she wasn't singing it to but you. No, 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 not to <laughs> me. But, but no, I will be... No, I'm talking about we've done fucking bullshit with the bodies or the midnight or whatever, and they've sung, and, and we sang Happy Birthday to Fifi the Dog. That's right. I remember that for sure. And the show got canceled, right? Uh, immediately afterwards, yes. And Michael St. John was off key. I blame him. Hey, speaking of Louisville history, just because people have suddenly started sending me this in the last week, what do you know about the story about the horse getting caught in a tree? What? Have you ever seen this picture in from Louisville, Kentucky of a horse in a tree? From when? Recently? No, it's an old picture from like oh, after, okay. after a tornado. I guess the horse got blown all the way to the top of the tree and died, yeah. and they couldn't get it down. Well, these things happen in tornadoes. All right. Yeah. It's that expert commentary you can only get here. <laughs> you're just trying to steal my fence post turtle story. <laughs> It's what you're doing here. All kinds of strange things can happen, Annie M. When the twister's coming, you get you can you can see goddamn uh, telephone poles through fucking walls, or you can see goddamn minor little items through telephone poles, and things appear where they shouldn't be. Or horses and, and trees. Horses and trees. It's raining horses. Hallelujah! It's raining. All right. Anyway.